kids, all that sort of cool stuff. We uh, managed to get them to actually take their first scuba dive lesson and have them scuba dive, which was really cool to hear kids uh, having that uh, moment where they understand uh, their buoyancy and being relaxed in the water and being able to breathe in a situation where they can't normally breathe. So that was exciting and uh, restful and we had fun and good food and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, Funny thing happened though, while I was away, because we were gone for about nine days, I think, and what happened while I was away, I'm like, sorry for scratching all the time, but I got sunburned, of course, and I'm itchy all over, and peeling, that's gross. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, was, I knew it was time to get back uh, when I was sitting there reading a book, and some science, great science fiction book, actually, it was an old book, uh, A Moat in God's Eye, I think it's called, and anyway, just kind of get my juices flowing to play the new uh, space, infantry expansion new worlds i think it's called so i'm super excited about getting to that anyway i see this helicopter coming across the uh uh the, the beach up fairly high a couple you know up maybe 150 200 feet high something like that and uh, and i'm hearing the sounds of the, the the noise that a helicopter makes when it approaches which is very different than the noise it makes when it's over you and different again from the noise it makes when it passes you. So you've got this fuck, 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 and then you've got this whining uh, uh, rotor blade noise, and then you can hear the gas, the turbines in the in the distance um, when it passes. So I'm listening to that. I'm thinking, oh, I've got to remember the exact sound of how the helicopter sounds, so that when I write my next AAR and I do a narrative, I can capture that feeling and that sound. It was then that I realized I need to get back and start pushing counters and rolling dice. So I'm really glad to get back. Uh, and I want to touch, kind of uh, update on what's going on with the big board and in terms of the games that I'm playing. Uh, the, there's a little bit of confusion with some folks about who's posting on the big board. There's uh, two or three uh, folks who are posting and some don't want their full name revealed. They just want to post and, and all that sort of stuff. So uh, those people that know, uh, JK know who he is and uh, people know Anthony he posts a lot of stuff on Facebook with images and things like that and there are other guys that and girls that post uh, bits and pieces so Gasine uh, has uh, started posting some video and articles about her experiences gaming as well uh, she started out with a heavy influence on ancients and is now doing uh, blocks in the east actually uh, I arranged to get her a, a, a review copy and then Fushigi is also uh, uh, doing some stuff, but not writing directly on the blog. She's making videos and I'm just sharing them uh, so that you guys can see her experience as a brand new raw war gamer from scratch, Euro player, moving into the big time and in the big leagues and trying to become a wrong nerd. So um, that's kind of what's going on in terms of who's posting stuff. And you should be able to see the tag at the bottom will say who posted it, whether it's me or someone else. And so that will help you, um, uh, you know, direct comments. Because I know some folks have directed comments to me about my collection or about my bookshelves or whatever. And that's all been someone else's stuff. Uh, the other thing is uh, I had lots of requests for, you know, how do I buy and sell? and How do I choose what to keep? And how do I learn games and things like that? I wrote a little article about how I uh, acquire and dispose of games, uh, and I, I'm not sure how I'm going to share with you how I learn games. But I'm not sure that would be that interesting because you don't want to sit there watching me read a book of rules or whatever the case may be. Uh, but we can work out something. Uh, problem is that most of the time I'm kind of half-assed about it and I only get spun up around the axle once I'm playing and then I'm looking for an answer to a rule and I want to make sure that it's if it's significant I want to make sure that I do it right because uh, as I mentioned earlier in a different post I'm starting to feel like there are some really amazing games out there that I'm not going to get to play again and DAC 2 is one of them I think um, I think DAC 2 uh, I'm on my second playthrough now and we're in the July I'm sorry about the background noise, but we've got construction going on. Um, let me turn this down. Uh, I was going to 
say. Um, we're in July 1941, and I think the uh, Germans have the potential to kind of wrap the game up by September, October time frame. Um, and that, that kind of bothers me because I want to see it played out to the full historical uh, extent, but if the game's over, the game's over. So uh, first playthrough, uh, you know, we had Rommel dancing on uh, the Sphinx, uh, June or May, June, maybe even earlier. Uh, time frame uh, just cause no, that that's the, the way it worked out uh, this time I think we've got a more balanced game but it's it's taken time anyway so games like that I don't think I'm gonna get to do that again uh, when I set up case blue and get Arian's Blitzkrieg I don't think I'm gonna get to play that again particularly solo uh, that'll take a year potentially so as I'm looking at all these new games that are coming in, you know, I've had two boxes of stuff arrive while I was away, and um, War of the Suns is coming, and there's some um, uh, Road to Moscow is coming, and I see the D-Day uh, at Omaha Beach is coming. Uh, so there's a bunch of new things coming that obviously I want to play. Uh, so I, I, I felt very uh, compelled to try and look at all these games and by looking at them and reading rules and doing things I haven't been playing as much lately so uh, new focus is going to I want to share with you what my intentions are for the balance of the year will be to finish Act 2 continue with our play by poll of uh, CV the midway battle I think that's uh, very interesting a lot of fun right now and I think people are having fun uh, engaging in a game that perhaps would never play or uh, may not own uh, because of the way we're structuring the play. You vote, those votes uh, uh, are up for a period of time and those votes will drive the actions of the allied player as we go through the exercise of playing the game and, I'll, and I'm umpiring and playing the, the Japanese. So I want to keep that going. Uh, I need to uh, play Case White uh, in, in our chronological playthrough of World War II. We want to uh, make sure that we capture uh, the, the first major conflict, uh, the invasion of Poland, and then we need the Balkans done. And I don't have a Balkans title, so uh, I had the, a short list of games and I don't have it handy with me, but I, I'm interested in your opinions on which would be a great title for us to uh, play, or for me to play, I should say. Uh, and for me to share with you uh, in our chronological playthrough of World War II. And I'm going to repost all of, uh, once we're done with the chronological playthrough sometime in 2020 or whenever it is that we get finished, uh, I'm going to repost all of the play and uh, put it into some sort of uh, chronological order and have it make sense and maybe even put that on a separate website uh, so that we can have a war gamers view of their experience for World War II. I'm obviously not going to take the results of each game and have them impact other games that I play, other titles that I play, although that would be cool, because uh, I don't know how to do that uh, effectively. But, uh, so there's that, so there's chrono chronological playthrough of World War II, there's play by poll, and there's DAC 2 as part of the chrono chronology. And then we have, I've got some Vassal games going, uh, which are all well and good. And then side by sides, and uh, the side by side plays really come in two different uh, styles. There's one where I get together with my buddies here locally, and we get two copies of the same game, and we go through that experience of seeing how two teams of people playing the same game will have a how how their strategies are different in their playthroughs. And that's always been you know, interesting to me, and I think that from what I've seen of the comments on the posts uh, when they posted that that's. Uh, that's pretty uh, interesting as well. And the second, uh, for you as well, the second uh, way that I do side by side is take a battle or a conflict or uh, something of that nature and play two titles side by side. So we just did uh, A Victory Denied and Panzer Group Guderian. Uh, that was a great experience for me. I really enjoyed digging into uh, both games and uh, having to be a little bit more thoughtful about the play so that I could appreciate the differences in the mechanics and the similarities uh, and how they both reflected upon the actual conflict itself. So that has got me inspired to certainly through the, chron the chronological uh, playing of World War II, we're going to be looking at, um, uh, for instance, uh, we'll take Asia engulfed and 
maybe Empire of the Sun and maybe Fire in the Sky and use um, those two or three titles for side-by-side -side play. And that may take a fairly extensive period of time, but it'll be something we'll, that we'll, we'll just do anyway and uh, it'll be my job to keep track of all that. So there's the, they're the, uh, is that everything? That's, that's the chunk of stuff that I want to get focused on. But I still have um, a nagging uh, need to finish this annoying game, A Most Dangerous Time, uh, mainly because I I'm using it to uh, generate battles for Ran, and I'm really enjoying Ran right now. That's the Great Battles of History title set in Feudal Japan era. Uh, AMDT is... Uh, still sitting here. I've started it again for the second time and I'm frustrated as all hell with it and uh, I'm not sure why. Um, th there's a lot of inconsistencies and things that aren't clearly explained in the game and that just annoys me. There's not enough players of the game for me to get uh, timely answers to things. I, I really, you know, is me being impatient. I don't like waiting, right? I don't like to wait three days to get a response uh, from fans of the game or from designers. And it's not their fault. They're busy doing their thing. And, I, and I'm right in the middle of doing stuff. And then when I have to stop, then I stop. And it's I'm off it for a week or two. And I'm going to get spun back up on the rules. So I haven't touched the friggin' thing for two weeks now. I'm going to have to probably reread the rules because they're so... Uh, they're just not filtering for me correctly. So we got that going on. Uh, we've got some other games. You know, uh, I'm really interested in this the Musk and Pike series. I picked up uh, Nothing Game but Glory. Uh, I'm playing a little bit of the American Battles uh, series from GMT, the the Revolution series. I picked up Germantown. I've got that over there too. I've got a review copy of War Party that I need to set up and play with some buddies or play by myself and see how that all works out. I'm not sure when I'm going to get to that, but hopefully that'll be soon got lots of World of War and Lock and Load stuff uh, coming up. Uh, lots of interesting news coming out of Lock and Load with the change in management and uh, adjustment in the ownership there. Uh, I think that Jim, I had a conversation with Jim yesterday. Uh, I think that the company is, uh, I was a little concerned that they weren't going to get focused on the operational and production aspects of their business, which is from my perspective to the core. Uh, issues that uh, Lock and Load have, but it seems like Jim uh, has a good handle on uh, the concerns that customers have and the lack of product available on the shelves. So he went through a list of games that he's intending to put out on P500 and a list of games that he's intending on just going straight to publish uh, uh, anyway without, uh, without a P500 which uh, was very impressive, I'll say that much. I won't steal their thunder and, and um, uh, share the names of the titles, but suffice to say that there's a, a, a nice swag of new titles coming out, uh, sorry, reprints coming out for titles that you love in most of the series that uh, you all will know, Lock and Load, uh, World of War, Nations of War, etc. So really good things coming, I think, from there. They've got some really nice new titles. I know they're gonna try and get uh, uh, between two and four titles a year out for their magazine, uh, Line of Fire, which is an excellent magazine. I think they're going to focus more on um, content for the players versus uh, a game per issue, which I'm a little disappointed in, but I think it's probably a good a good idea because I'd like to see lots more counters for Lock and Load. Uh, I want uh, more Rebels and I want funky vehicles and uh, more modern vehicles. That'll be cool. Uh, this has become a long video, so let's stop there. Uh, I wanted to kind of recap on kind of the big things we're doing, chronological play of World War II, uh, some Feudal Japan stuff, side-by-side uh, -side plays, play-by-poll, and that's going to drive my gameplay. Uh, and then there'll be series play of things, so like Muscat and Pike, Lock and Load, World of War, things that I, I know and love that I'm going to just be playing and doing narrative on or stop motion video or whatever the case may be. So kind of uh, uh, I'm back and enthused and charged up. I've got the weekend as of 4 p.m. Sunday right through to Tuesday night, midnight or uh, Tuesday afternoon, late afternoon, early evening by myself. I'll be playing non-stop uh, and uh, then collecting all that and uh, posting. 
and we'll kind of go from there. So good, uh, good talking to you guys.